999, 1,000. You're at the music with Zach and Gotchi. First up, Lawrence English has reissued his album, The Peregrine. The album's title references the autobiography by famous author and bird, The Peregrine Falcon. But Zach, does this album fly like the falcon? Or does it also fly, but this time, like a seagull? It's based on this novel that he's obsessed with that he found in some thrift shop and apparently the whole book is just talking about like peregrines flying and it's like a travel journal and he wanted to make a soundtrack to that and it does sound like the soundtrack to a bird just like a gliding across the sky. Uh, he really captures it I think quite well. It's, it's very interesting strange subject matter which I think is quite important for an ambient record which can sometimes feel quite difficult to distinguish in, in the ambient genre. And I've, I've read that he had this obsession with birds. In fact, that's what inspired him to get into music. Um, and so it does have this sense of like freedom of transmogrification into a bird. And Pretend you know. that you're a bird, you know, maybe squawk or squeal, probably in your head so you don't interrupt Not the Not around the others. But yeah, exactly. Uh, and just glide away on a... On I don't know, what do birds glide on themselves? Yeah, I'd give it three Zacks and half a gotchi. Zach, Zach, yeah, this to me, this is a pretty comfortable four Zacker. I think it's good for Zach, 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 Zach. any time. Next up, we have Enfant Terrible, or Shit Child, Holly Herndon, with her new album, Platform. Matt, can intelligent dance music make me not stupid? Mate, I reckon RDM's back. Holly Herndon has this incredible array of samples she has like organic instrumentation and artificial instrumentation, stuff you don't even know where it came from. Kind of 21st century computer music made on a computer, obviously, but also she samples a lot of sounds from using your computer, be it like opening Microsoft Word or like startups. It's not tacky at all though, like it sounds really like you're like lost inside a computer with things just whizzing around your head and her voice, of course, which mm. is quite distinctive. Um, and beautiful. There's even a love song in there at one point. It's all very conceptual and very arty, but at the same time, very accessible because it's so just great just hearing all the sounds whizzing around you. And it's oddly political as a record, uh, more than you're expecting, I think, when mm. you go into it for something you think it'll just be like a nice sonic landscape. If you're into a, like interesting electronic music or kind of like frenetic electronic music, I'd say it's like a must, a must listen. Uh, I'll give it four zags, and because you liked it so much, I'll throw in that half a gotchi. And for me, four Zacks. Well, it seems Blur no longer have to live in the shadow of their arch nemesis, BDI. This year, they've released the Magic Whip, but can it compete with Noel Gallagher's high flying birds? Zach. The backstory to this record is very interesting. So, they, some festival they were playing in Japan gets cancelled, and they've got five days with nothing to do, so they just recorded this record of things that Damon had like lying around. So it's pretty amazingly good for a record that they casually recorded on a whim when they had five days off. The best part of this entire record is the first 20 seconds when you just hear like those blur guitars kick back in for the first time and you just remember like how good a sound they could just get out of four guys playing four chords. If they can just knock off this in five days of them messing around on a whim, uh, it makes you yearn for like a proper blur record the whole way through. Damon Albon, Alban has just developed into this incredible master with synthesis. So his use of production is just so slick now and it's, it's, it's very beat driven. Um, most of the uh, rhythms are using like sort of, you know, ethnic percussion and that sort of thing. So you can definitely tell he's, he's taken a bit from the gorillas. Like you finish this album and the first thing you do is put on 13. Park Life or 13 yeah. by Blur. Because you just want to listen to like an actual Blur album so yeah. much. I mean, for me, the fact that it has been 15 years does render it more refreshing than old hat to hear that old sound. But if this was released, you know, three years after 13 or Think Tank, then it would, you know, probably get a, you know, three Zach. But I think given that it's been 15 years and I'm ready to hear Blur again, I'm going to give it three Zacks and half a gotchi. Zach, 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 gotchi. I think I'm going to agree with you on the three Zacks and half a gotchi front. Zach, 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 but, gotchi. you know, listen to it if you like Blur and then just go listen to 13 or Park Life because those are good records. That's all we've got time for. Here on at the, at the music at after the at, after at the at the music.